of Finance, and to me, I think, was a very smart move, because it put it right at the heart of government and right at the centre of that central agency's club, and that was crucial to driving this agenda. The fourth lesson from all of this, I think, has been the important role of the Business Council of Australia. Every time I've met with them over the last few years, I, I keep saying to them, keep getting those front pages of the Fin Review. Keep putting pressure on us, because there is nothing like external pressure to push issues up the political agenda. So their role, and to some degree some other employer organisations, business organisations, has been very important in keeping the issue in the public eye, putting pressure and keeping us honest and making sure that we are still actually doing things. There is a great challenge with all of this and that is how do you actually popularise and get a wider engagement amongst the community with these kind of issues. I found it very hard. I think innately the content makes it difficult. The best I could come up with is to uh, at every speech I made, every contribution I made in public dealing with these issues to point out that people in New South Wales are quite happy for me to drive on their roads and rely on Victorian authorities to tell them that I'll probably drive safely and that I won't kill them. But if I were a Victorian plumber, they wouldn't allow me to fix their toilets without sitting for a licence exam for plumbers in New South Wales. Clearly it's a dangerous business fixing people's toilets and far more risky than driving on their roads. It is very difficult to popularise reforms of this kind because they're incremental, because they're diffuse, because they're spread over so many activities and because the proportion of people who kind of understand how important they are as a proportion of the total population is relatively small. So that is the business regulation and competition working group story thus far. I think so far it's been outstandingly successful. It's also set a really good working model for continuous cooperation and collaboration between the two levels of government rather than occasional coming together every six months or 12 months. You have got almost continuous dialogue going on now across key players in the central agencies, state and federal, and I think that augurs very well for future agendas, and it's something that really does need to be built on. The second example I wanted to mention, which is also something I've been intimately involved in over a much longer period of time, is broadband. In 2002, I was Shadow Minister for Communications, and I put out, with the support of the then leader, Simon Crean, to his great credit, a reform agenda about Telstra which had at its heart the concept of structural separation of Telstra. Now, this was then a somewhat radical and seen as pretty scary kind of proposition. The idea had been floating around a bit in some places for quite a long time, but this was really the first time that anybody put it seriously on the central political agenda. And over the following period of time, both I and Steve Conroy focused relentlessly on one core objective in telecommunications. He replaced me as Shadow Minister at the end of 2004 and we have worked very closely together ever since that time. And that is getting the industry structure right. Telecommunications now in Australia is almost as important to our economy as financial services. It is becoming just as significant as the kind of lifeblood of economic activity as moving money around. And yet, because of the obsession of the Howard government with privatisation and its failure to deal first with issues of industry structure and ensuring that we had a genuinely competitive industry arrangement, we ended up in a position with, in effect, a private monopoly, too powerful for any government to effectively regulate, as Sol Trujillo, I think, happily demonstrated in his relationships with the Howard government, and one which was about two-thirds of the entire industry and whose creativity and energy and dynamism was all focused on gaming the regulatory regime and squashing competition and innovation, rather than liberating its own enormous capabilities for innovation and risk-taking and literally being world-leading, which Telstra has those capabilities, but you had a structure that skewed all the incentives in the wrong direction. I don't blame Telstra for that, because throughout that period, under different leaderships, Telstra has made decisions in the interests of its shareholders, as it should, as the Telstra board management saw them. I blame the previous government, 
for failing to address these issues and then finding itself in a position where broadband rollout in Australia was way behind many comparable countries, whether in access, speed, price, you name it, and where basically the dynamics were all skewed against rapid technological change, rapid innovation and development of new products. So Conroy and I have been relentlessly focused on fixing that problem and ultimately that's what the National Broadband Network is about. It is not just a piece of infrastructure, huge though it is in that context. It is also a giant reform agenda that is about creating a genuine level playing field, a competitive level, level playing field in telecommunications in Australia. Incidentally, a playing field on which I think Telstra is destined to do extraordinarily well because its emphasis will shift from lots of lawyers gaming regulations to more innovation, better marketing, better product development and competing from a position of genuine strength. Now, it's been an interesting experience over that time because the idea of structural separation for, of Telstra when I was first pursuing it was something of a, uh, a kind of fringe position. Throughout the time, uh, I was unable to get any serious interest or support from people like the Business Council of Australia or Australian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. They uh, were very happy to berate Labor for its perceived failings on economic reform in certain specified areas like industrial relations. But when it came to the need for serious reform in telecommunications of fundamental importance to most, if not all, of their constituency, they were not forthcoming, and we can all speculate as to why. It was also difficult because there wasn't much going on in the university world about these issues. There was a bit, but not a huge amount. Uh, and therefore, there was a, a bit of a vacuum, to be honest, in, in the public policy world about these issues. Graham Samuel and the ACCC were enormously important, although clearly because they're not a, a public advocacy body, they were constrained, but nonetheless, the commitment of the ACCC and Alan Fells beforehand to genuine competition and to following through on the national competition policy principles from 1995 was an ever-present pressure in the debate that always helped to focus attention on the problem, and there was and continues to be a serious problem. The media wasn't that interested. Uh, in fact, uh, to the extent that you had media coverage of these issues, it tended to be uh, places like The Age, which was relentlessly anti-reform, giving regular coverage for people like Kevin Morgan and Ken Davidson, who don't believe there's a problem and think that competition's not really a significant thing in areas like telecommunications. The remainder of the media, by and large, over that time, frankly, was not paying much attention. The Australian and the Fin Review would occasionally arc up but then forget about it for extended periods of time. But finally, in perhaps ways that nobody anticipated, we have got to a point where a new world of genuinely competitive world-class telecommunications is going to be available for Australia and for Australian businesses. The lessons from all of this are first, build a case. Second, focus very much on the deficiencies that are being experienced by ordinary people, ordinary businesses, which ultimately drove the impetus for reform. Third, create champions wherever you can. And so one of the things that's happened, of course, is that the demand for serious broadband has moved from the, the fringe geeky world just into ordinary mainstream Australia, whether as consumers or whether as businesses. And finally, try and mobilise the interests that support you to be as active as they can in the public debate. So all of those things, and I could talk at great length for hours about broadband, as you can probably guess, but all of those things I think are great lessons that flow from this experience. It's not over yet. The coalition has re reverted to type. John Howard has been sort of resurrected out of the graveyard and we now have version 18 of their rinky-dink Mickey Mouse sort of look like you're doing something broadband policy. I hope that the Australian people will not display an interest in that because leaving aside my partisan political interests, I think it will relegate Australia, as Steve Conroy very eloquently said, to the digital dark ages yet again, when what the National Broadband Network about is about breaking through the inertia, breaking through the resistance and creating a genuinely viable, competitive, innovation-driven, risk-driven 
piece of national infrastructure on which all comers from Telstra down will be able to compete on equal terms and where your capacity to innovate, your capacity to take risk, your cap capacity to mobilise capital will be the determinant of who makes money and who doesn't, rather than your capacity to mobilise lots of lawyers and game the regulations, which has been the case up until now. Thank you very much for the opportunity to be with you. I hope that's of some interest and instruction for you as sort of stories from the crypt about uh, the travails of trying to reform anything when you're in federal government in the modern era in Australia. Uh, don't be fooled by the commentary. There's a lot of reform going on, but unfortunately, a lot of it is of the reforming procurement ilk, which is very hard to make sexy for a TV show or a tabloid newspaper, and therefore you never hear about it, but there is a lot of good reform going on. There's still always going to be need for more. Thank you very much. I'll be very happy to answer any questions.